Okay, welcome back, Uncut with Jay Cutler. We've got a uh, we got a good one today. Um, Dusty Slay, comedian from Alabama, is going to come in studio. Studio. He lives in Nashville now. He's on the new stand ups on Netflix. He's episode five. Uh, what is it? Season three of the stand ups. Episode five. Um, I watched it a couple days ago. It's uh, he's funny. Uh, a little dry, but I like that type of humor. Um, looks like he's going to be in Raleigh, um, North Carolina, coming up, Atlanta, opening for Jeff, Jeff Foxworthy. Uh, he uh, grew up in a trailer park, um, doesn't drink anymore because he's an alcoholic. He talks about all this, so I'm not saying too much here, but um, I'm excited. I, I always like having comedians in. Um, they do most of the hard work for me because they... They're, they're, they're great talkers, and they can tell good stories. So uh, like anything else, hit me up on Instagram, um, Twitter. If you've got guests, um, we've got some uh, an alien expert in, I think, in a couple of weeks. Uh, and then we've, we've got some other things that um, you guys have been requesting. So let's get uh, Dusty in here. I think his tagline is, we're having a good time. So we're probably going to hear him say we're having a good time um, multiple times on this hopefully and if he doesn't say it then obviously this didn't go very well so let's do this um here we go dusty slay okay welcome back we got uh uncut with myself and in studio um dusty slay all right we're thanks. having a good time <laughs> thanks for coming out <laughs> yeah uh you're on netflix now season three of the stand-ups episode five i watched it really funny thank you How'd you get how'd you get involved with that? Well, I mean, I don't know. I ask myself that question sometimes. How have I made it to where I'm at? But, you know, how uh, old are you? I'm 39. OK. In 2018, I did uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live. And then later that year, I did The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. And mm -hmm. I got those, you know, on my own, working the road, uh, doing comedy, doing comedy festivals and then uh, because of my Tonight Show appearance, I got management and agents, and, you know, they're great at their job. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, that's basically how I ended up on Netflix. Like, me being doing my part, being funny. Sure. And then my management being great. Do you know Nate here in town? I do know Nate, yeah. yeah. He came on the podcast. He's, he's, he's really funny. Then I went and saw him in uh, South Carolina, too. Okay. Nice show. I really like him. Yeah, Nate's great. I mean, when I moved to Nashville, I was listening to a lot of Nate. Mm -hmm. He had an album out, and the first open mic I went to, he showed up. And really? I was like, okay, I've moved to the right place. Were you always funny? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I grew up in a trailer park, and, and my parents were divorced from, I think, from the time I was two. And it's like, uh, you know, it just kind of, my parents are both really funny people, but mm -hmm. I feel like laughter is just how I survived in school. Yeah. Like, I just made people laugh all the time, and I don't know, it just felt fun. I don't know. I never felt like my life was sad. I mean, I look back on it, and I'm like, no, there was some, probably some sad stuff in there, but uh, I didn't think so at the time. You were down in Alabama? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I grew up right next to Auburn University, a town called Opelika. Opelika. So, But my dad's an Alabama fan. My mom's an Auburn fan. They've been divorced. They're very sensitive about it. So I feel like I learn to uh, walk the line. I can cheer for Auburn and Alabama. Um, what, how old were you when they got divorced? I think I was two. My dad yeah. says three, but it's debatable. It, any brothers and sisters? I have two older sisters. We have the same mom, different dad. And then I have a younger sister. We have the same dad, different mom. So my younger sister, not related to my older sisters. I mean, you had to have a lot. There has to be a lot of content from the growing up in a trailer park? I mean, on my Netflix, probably half of it is trailer park jokes. Yeah. But I bet I have another 15, 20 minutes of stuff that I've so, done over the years. Some exaggerated, but, but, but there's some seeds of truth in all of it. Yeah, you know, I've, I've talked to a few comedians, and it seems like, you know, some of the best, some of the best stuff does come from, like, real life. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what, I mean, and I guess there are these comics out there, but I don't know what someone growing up rich with yeah. a great family would ever write jokes about. Not that my family's not great, but sure. they got 
all sorts. I, I keep telling people uh, about this. My my mom showed up to my house the other day with her step great grandson. Step great grandson, which okay. is just hilarious to me. Yeah. Just I'd have to write that out to figure that one out. Yeah, I mean, I got a family tree that goes all kind of ways, <laughs> and uh, some of it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, it's like, I don't know what someone with a good, and I know comics with sure. good lives sure. that, you know, and they write jokes about how hard dating is, mm -hmm. but I don't even know how hard dating would be with a life like that. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I, growing up in that, that situation where you're super rich and everything's kind of handed to you, it'd, it'd probably be maybe an easier path, unless you got derailed, I guess, which probably happens to quite a few people too. Yeah. I mean, I even think that when I watch football sometimes, I'm like, if you like had your life paved out for you, mm -hmm. like why put yourself through the abuse of football? It seems like a blast, but I see guys get hit. I mean, I played football in eighth grade yeah. and I liked it until hitting drills <laughs> where they lined us up 10 yards apart. And I was like, yeah. oh, you want me to run into this guy? Yeah. I was like, I don't like this. I told my mom I was quitting. I had all my stuff and uh -huh. I was like, I'm quitting. She goes, okay, go tell your coach. And so I just went and put my stuff back. I played the whole year because I wouldn't tell my coach. You wouldn't coach tell your coach. Yeah. I get that. They can be scary. I remember I, I played flag in fourth grade. And then fifth grade was my first year of tackle. And, you know, you, you play offense and defense at that point. And I remember, like, those first couple weeks, I was like, this hitting stuff is – I'm not really sure about this yeah. stuff. Yeah, we played tackle in the trailer park, you yeah. know, but we weren't running right no. at each yeah. other. Yeah, I remember playing a few games, you know, different games. We had to, some bad words for them, but, you know, tackle and tates around. But, like, you know, it's more like rugby. You're kind of just kind of bodying it up. You're not going full speed and just oh yeah, destroying people. I, but, I mean, even for me, I mean, I don't know if I was weak or what, but the helmet would hurt my neck. I'm <laughs> like, I'm tired of wearing this helmet. Well, I look at these, you know, there's some like five, four or five-year-olds that are playing football right now, and the helmet's literally like out to here. I'm oh, like, yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of, it's insane right now. What uh, did you, when did you decide, like, I'm going to do comedy? Like, did you have jobs in high school or after high school? You're like trying to figure it out? Yeah, I had several jobs. I worked at a, a Western Sizzlin. I was the only male server and probably the only one under 50. <laughs> <laughs> and the truckers would come in and be so disappointed when I was their you server. show up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, you know, I worked at a restaurant called Jim Bob's Chicken Fingers. Mm -hmm. You know, I did all of those. And then I moved to Charleston, South Carolina when I was 21. And I, uh, I was waiting tables at a restaurant called Hyman's which was located on the same block as a restaurant called Sticky Fingers. And, uh, and then I uh, uh, sold pesticides simultaneously for about 10 years, and I got into comedy during that time. Gotcha. So are, were, you, were you writing jokes or anything before that, or just kind of? No, I took an improv class because I would moved to Charleston. I didn't have any friends. My, uh -huh. my buddy that I moved there with, we, we immediately fought and moved out with each other. Why? We're still friends now, but I don't know. It just, Dude. well, he moved his girlfriend in oh. uh, right away from our hometown. It ruined the whole plan. Now, we're all three friends now. They're married. They have kids. It worked out for them. Yeah. It worked out for me, too, but because, because of that, I, I took an improv class. Okay. And then I was like, oh, this is pretty fun. And then I got into stand-up, and I was making up a lot of stuff. And uh, improv, Improv's a little bit different than comedy, right? Because Nate, Nate was talking Nate, Nate, Nate was like, uh, he did start with improv, I think, too. He was like, I didn't like that. He goes, I, I liked just more of the comedy bit. Yeah, I like improv, but yeah. improv is uh, real silly, uh -huh. and you create a lot of characters, and yeah. I've seen some really great improv, yeah. but there's also a lot of really bad improv, and you could say the same for stand-up, but you know, you go out, my improv teachers would always be like, why don't you try playing a character, and I'm like, well, the character that I play in my real life is the funniest character I've ever created. Yeah. I don't even know if I'm a real person sometimes. I am the character that I've created. <laughs> On and off stage? Yeah, I mean, it, I get a little... kind of morphed? I think when I get on stage, I get a, I, I talk a little more Southern, but yeah. I don't intend on doing it, uh -huh. but it comes out because, you know, there's a country song by uh, Drive-By Truckers where they say, uh, don't, don't worry about losing your accent, a Southern man tells better jokes, you know? Uh -huh. And I feel like when I get into the Southern vibe that the jokes are funnier. Yeah. But I grew, I mean, I was so country as a kid. I got tapes of myself talking. Really? But just, uh, I don't know, the traveling I've done, it's it's faded out. My wife's Canadian too, so it's like. She's a comedian too, right? She used to do comedy. Okay. 
she did Cana she did some Canadian TV and uh -huh. did comedy down here on the road and she just kind of got burned out on the road and how'd you, we, how'd you guys meet? Uh, we met in New York City. I was up visiting. Mm -hmm. uh, I rented an apartment for one month because I just wanted to try out New York and see what that was all about. Try out like the comedy scene or just kind of try out life in New York? The comedy scene, but a little bit of both. Yeah. I mean, it was because, you know, you go to New York for a weekend, you wear yourself out the first day, you yeah. barely see anything. Yeah. So I thought, I'll take a month. Sure. I won't work. Yeah. I'll just, and my plan was to do com one open mic every day. Really? Which was, at the time, mind-blowing to me. I do so much comedy now that that's not even really that big of a deal. That seems like so much work. Yeah, I did 47 open mics sh and shows in 30 days. Really? Yeah, I just did nonstop. I would, I mean. Was it the same, like, did you, I mean, was it, you were just kind of practicing your same bit every time? Or, like, were you just kind of just letting it all fly? Well, I had a, a bit of material. Yeah. But I wasn't really trying out jokes. I yeah. tried out a little because I was more, more trying to make friends. Okay. So I worked out of the open mic circuit even in a month. I was already getting asked to do shows. Really? Yeah, because, I mean, you know, I've always been, even my first set in comedy was good. Really? It wasn't great, but uh -huh. it was good. Like, you've never had, a, I mean, have you ever, you've never had a show where, like, it just didn't work? Oh, yeah. I bombed many times. <laughs> but, you, you know, you're always trying stuff, and, uh, you know, you, you, some crowds are just not into it. It doesn't happen to me often, but sometimes you go out. And they're just not into it. Really? I tell them sometimes. I'm like, I don't, you know, I'll be on stage getting uh, kind of laughs, and then I'll get my first big laugh, and I'll yeah. go, yeah, these are good jokes here. Yeah. I don't travel the country telling mediocre jokes. Yeah. I'm like, get into it. I choose to look in the I like you. I look, it's been a rough couple years. So how about starting 2022 off with a smile? And nothing delivers smiles better than High Chew candy. High Chew's flavors are unlike anything else. High Chew has been created in over 200 flavors since it first launched in Japan in 1975 and with very specific flavor profiles. There is no artificial flavor taste at all. It's simple. High Chew makes people happy. High Chew isn't a gum or taffy. However, the chew texture is different from other candies. And the best part, High Chew contains no colors from synthetic sources and is gluten-free. MLB players across the globe love high chew candy, but they're not the only ones. Celebrity fans of high chew include folks like John Mayer, Kylie Jenner, and Ryan Gosling, to name a few. You really need to try it out and find out what makes high chew so special. We want you to love high chew as much as we do. Visit high-chew.com slash win. That's H-I-C-H-E-W dot com slash W-I-N and enter to win an exclusive bucket full of high chew candy and swag. While you're there, check out how you can become a member of the High Chew Chew Crew, which is an exclusive club where you receive special offers and all the cool things. Go to high-chew.com slash win. Yeah, I do like that whenever I watch watch some of your stuff. Like, you kind of tell them, like, you kind of, you got to help them along. Like, hey, we're having a good time. Yeah, just it's like, yeah, get into it get here. Get into it here. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, it's like, that just comes from doing a lot of yeah. uh, bad road gigs. Yeah. Where you're just like, all right. These are good jokes. Mm -hmm. They're proven. I've seen them work. Yeah. You're not laughing. I don't know what's wrong with you. It's your problem, not mine. Right. You're, exactly. You're, you're the problem here. And I'm not mad at you for not laughing. Yeah. But don't sit there in your chair and act like I'm not funny. <laughs> you know? That takes, I feel like that takes, well, probably a lot of experience and a lot of confidence. Well, there's, I don't have confidence in everything in my life, but comedy, I do. You do. I mean, I've, I've worked for the confidence of comedy. It's a... Uh... I mean, that's got to be, to me, it'd be scary to sit up there and just, you know, rip off jokes and just hope these people laugh. Because being, being funny, I think, is probably one of the hardest things in the world to do. Because not many people can do it really, really well. Yeah, I mean, you know, even like amongst your friends, like, you know, you tell a story and they don't laugh and yeah. they're like, yeah, good story. Yeah. It's like, that's how it feels on, con on stage when it doesn't work, but except those people aren't your friends. Yeah. Right? And if you're not funny... Now they don't even like you. Yeah. So I think that's why I, I kind of like keep things cleaner mm -hmm. because, you know, I had, I had my, I did a show in Columbus, Georgia. I had my, my dad, his wife, uh, his cousin, his wife, people from their church. They all showed up. And I was doing at the time what I like to call my lotion jokes. Which you is know? what are those? Well, it's, you know, jokes about, you know, jerking uh -huh. it. And, uh -huh. uh, but they were pretty clean sure. for what they were. Yeah. But I, and they were, and they were working so well on the road, but mm -hmm. this night I was, I totally bombed 
and I bombed up there doing jokes like that mm -hmm. in front of all of these people in my family. And I just thought, you know, if I bomb and it's clean, yeah. at least I'm not embarrassing myself. Sure. If I'm talking about personal stuff uh -huh. and it's not going well, then I just, I don't know, I feel like I've sold my soul to, to, uh, uh -huh. to this joke, uh -huh. you know? Uh -huh. that, make, that, makes, that makes a lot of sense. I, uh, it's, it's, it, it would be tough. It would be really tough to do that, in my mind anyway. Do you, I mean, do you find yourself, you like, people, when you meet them, like they think that you should just be funny like in everyday life, just like, you know, just. Yeah, I think a lot of times people want to hang out with me after shows. Yeah. And I quit drinking like yeah. 10 years ago. Uh -huh. And I'm like, you know, I, I, I sometimes tell them, I'm like, this is the most fun that I, you've just seen me At my best. be my most fun. Yeah. I'm only going to let you down from here on out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because especially if we go out, I remember I did a, a show in St. Charles, uh, Illinois, and then after, after the show, these two guys, they had bought my hats. I wear a lot of white trucker hats. I yeah. sell white trucker yeah. hats. Well, uh, it, a lot of them say, uh, good time, having a good yeah, time. Yeah, we're having a good time, yeah. yeah. Yep. And they bought two of those hats. Mm -hmm. And so we're standing in the parking lot, um, and they're, they're looking at me like this. They're so wasted. We all got the hats on. Sure. And they're, they're having two different conversations with me at the exact same time. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like two degrees out there. Uh -huh. And I'm like, I don't even know what's happening out here. Yeah. So I have a hard time hanging out after shows. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Does your wife think you're funny? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's like my wife will act like I'm not funny. Uh -huh. And then I'll hit her with some stuff once in a while. Is she like, do you like test new stuff out on her? Oh, no, that's the worst. Because she, she shuts things down quick. Really? And I go, oh, I don't think you know what you're talking about. And then I'll go do it and it gets a laugh. Uh -huh. But, you know... My wife is really funny, you know, on stage, but also together. But I don't think I make her laugh as much as she makes me laugh. Really? Oh, yeah, but she, she judges me too hard, I think. Uh, it's pretty, probably pretty typical you know, of, a, yeah. of a married relationship. Yeah, she, she judges me too hard. I mean, I'm easy on her. How, uh, are you on the road a lot? Yeah, all the time. I have an eight-month-old baby, and I'm gone oh, so really? much that I was in Raleigh this past weekend, and I thought, hey, why don't we do a family trip? Sure. We'll all go together. Mm -hmm. I'm there for four nights, mm -hmm. and it was a mistake. <laughs> the, so? I mean, the baby did, we broke up the trip. We drove okay. to Asheville, then to Raleigh. Okay. So we were really gone five nights, yep. and the baby never slept in the hotel. Sounds about right. So I would go do shows, yep. come home, open the hotel door, the baby's crying, and if she's not crying when I open the door, I'll lay down in bed. I'm fired up from the show, so mm -hmm. it takes me about an hour to go to sleep. By the time, uh, it feels like my body's shutting down, the crying begins. <laughs> and I shoot up from the bed, uh -huh. and it's just like, and, you know, and, and the baby's fine. Sure. She just cry. You pick her up, and she's like, oh, you're awake? Yeah. I didn't realize you were awake. Let's play. Um, were you excited to have, have kids? Did you, was it? When, uh, actually, you know, it's funny. When my wife, we weren't necessarily trying to have a baby and but when me and my wife were fighting and she went and got a pregnancy test she knew something I didn't know we were fighting and she went and got a pregnancy test took it and she go in in the midst of like fighting she's like I'm pregnant and I was mad yeah. I was like how could you do this to me <laughs> but I love it I mean when yeah. the baby came out yeah. I was so excited and it's like it's the greatest yeah I can't imagine uh, going on in my life without having, ha I mean, it just, I think about, oh man, I was just living this weird kind of vacant life of, uh, selfishness. Yeah. And now I'm like, uh, uh, you know, the baby is always there. Yeah. It's not like a dog. Like you can't be like, Hey, I'm going to go out to the store. You just stay in the kitchen. Right. I'll be back. Just, please just don't shit on the floor. It's, it's, yeah. it's constant. Yeah. I mean, all the time. All the I time. mean, it's like, <laughs> It's like I almost uh, have started to wake up early mm -hmm. before the baby wakes up just mm -hmm. to, you know, have a little time. Have a little time. Have a coffee, play on my yep. phone, just do some stuff. Yeah. You're kind of in the, I've got three kids. I've got nine, seven, and six. Wow. And so uh, those first, that first year, year and a half is, is, is incredibly hard, I think. You know, I read that people with more, like, like a ton of kids, mm -hmm. they say three is the hardest. Yeah. After three... It's almost like... Yeah, I don't... I mean, I thought... I think going from one to two is harder. 
Okay. Because, you know, with one, like, you can team up. You can be like, all right, you've got them. Um, I'm going to go do something. I've got them. Um, you go do something. With two, it's like, all right, now we're playing man-to-man. Like, you got one. I got yeah. one. Or one person just has two, and then it's like, all right, now you're outnumbered. Yeah. Well, we want to have two, but I'm yeah. like, I don't know how we'll do it. I, 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 we, we question, we, after this weekend, we both said that. I don't know if we could do another. Well, I mean, traveling with an eight-month-old is, a, is an awful, awful plan. Like, you really, you really should have thought that one through. Worst idea I've ever had in a long list of bad <laughs> ideas. I mean, I was a blackout drunk for 10 years, and I don't know that I made a worse decision than taking a baby on the road with me. Oh, uh, it's probably up there. Yeah. It's definitely up there. I mean, has she been on a plane yet? Is it no. a girl? No, she, I tried to get her on a plane. I tried to get my wife to fly home early from Raleigh. I was like, I could put you on a plane right now, and you could be home in an hour. She's like, screw you. I'm not going to play <laughs> yeah. by myself with that girl. <laughs> I mean, I've, we've, been on, we've been on planes, and kids have puked. I mean, cried the entire time. It's, it, it's, it's bad. But then, and then you get to a point where they get a little bit older, but they really can't sit still for you know, two or three hours. So like, yeah, they're up and there's, they're talking to bothering people. There's food all over the floor. It's, uh, but it gets easier. We, I just took the kids to, uh, we went skiing in, uh, Deer Valley in Utah, four hour flight and nine, seven and six. I mean, they, I mean, they rocked it out. That's I mean, awesome. They had their books, coloring books, a couple iPads, watched a movie colored. So, I mean, it gets, it gets a lot easier, but those, those first couple of years is, but I will tell you this, going from, I thought going from two to three, it was just, it was just another mouth. Like it made no difference. Okay. It was just, it is what, it, so I think going from three to four would probably be damn near the same. Yeah. I think by that point, I mean, it's just like, I don't know, for me, it's like having a kid. It's like, I don't, I don't, my mom let me drive a car in a pond when I was 21 months old. She left me in a running car, no seatbelt. And I pulled the car into drive and drove it into a pond, down a hill, <laughs> crashed the car. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. I mean, a- according to my dad, I went in between two trees that if I'd hit the tree, I probably would have slammed in the windshield. I went through two barbed wire fences. And oh, so you it, went a ways. Oh, yeah. I went down a hill. and. No, you were just out. Apparently just was cruising. actually. Yeah. Yeah. And. You know, I got burned in the head with a cigarette by accident. I don't know. It was by accident. Sure. No one burned me in the head with a cigarette yeah, yeah. on purpose. Yeah, but yeah. Um, but it's like, so I don't even know. I mean, I didn't know anything about having a kid. Who does? But Yeah, and I don't think anyone has really got it all figured out in I that like, regard. I don't, I, don't know any, I don't know any children's songs. I'm singing country <laughs> songs to my baby when trying to make her be quiet. I don't, uh-huh. I, I'm singing Kenny Rogers, you know, and... Were there a bunch of kids around you growing up in the, in the, in the park? Yeah, we had a good time. We had a lot of kids, yeah, sure. you know, and, you know, we got into all, we played in the woods all the time, and we mostly stayed out of trouble. I mean, as we got a little older, we, you know, found some cigarettes, some chewing tobacco, something, broke a car window here and there, but sure. uh, nothing wild. Nothing that crazy. Yeah. When did you move to Nashville? In 2014. Okay. When I, I quit drinking in 2012, at the very beginning, so almost. How did you make that decision? Well, was, I was it hard? Well, I, I, when I finally did it, it wasn't really that hard. But I, you know, I got, you know, I've kept random journals throughout the years. I mean, I got a journal from 2004 where I was telling myself to quit drinking. Oh, really? So I mean, you know, so another eight, eight years, years. Uh, I can. But it's like I don't know. I would have so much fun drinking. Sure. But I just would, you know, I, I, had, a, I had a real uh, ability to handle it in a weird way. Like I wouldn't, I didn't throw up a lot. I would just black out. So I could just drink all day. And then I would be stupid and, you know, I'd drink beer all day and then go to the bar and do some shots. Mm-hmm. Black out. And I had a buddy that I used to drink with. And we, the two of us, we just could not embarrass each other. So we were, you know, we were in our own little drunken world. Yeah. We would get kicked out of a bar and laugh our way to the next one. <laughs> and we just didn't care at yeah. all. And it's like, that's a lot of fun, yeah. but really a nightmare for uh, living in the real world. Sure. 
Well, I mean, were you doing comedy while you're doing? Th- Where were you at? I was in Charleston. Okay. All my drinking is mostly in Charleston. In Charleston. So it's like I got to. It's just, a fun. It's a fun town to drink in. It's such a blast. I love that town. I lived on Folly Beach for a year. Uh huh. And yeah, it just my I, I got so sunburned from being at the beach every day that my forehead was scabbing up. I like calloused it with the sun. Uh huh. And it was such a great time. I mean, you could I could I drink an eighteen pack out on the beach. What what, what kind of beer? Uh, you know, we did classic Bud Light, mm-hmm. classic Alabama beer. But mm-hmm. as I, you know, as I got more into it, I really like a Coors Original. Okay. Like the, I call the, it a, the, like the stubby can. I like to bottle. Or the, well, stu- the stu- I mean, the stubby bottle. Yeah. Little, little brown ones. Oh so. yeah, I love it. I mean, a Coors Heavy is what I called it. I mean, oh, I yeah. loved it. If you exercise weekly, or if you're an active person, then you probably learned the importance of recovery. It's not enough that we just want to work out. Our body needs to be fueled with natural, organic proteins and nutrient-dense superfoods. Those are life's building blocks. The most elite athletes in the world achieve this through personal chefs and dietitians. For the rest of us, we can do the same thing at a fraction of the cost. Organifi makes all natural, organic superfood and protein blends that are just perfect for active gym goers. Their green juice is great for lowering cortisol and enhancing recovery. And their red juice has proteins that are all great for supporting energy. The Complete Protein is a plant-based shake with 20 grams of protein, and it's also a multivitamin, all made with whole food ingredients. Your body will reward you for treating yourself like the king or queen that you are. The best part is they all taste absolutely fresh and delicious. Go to www.organifi.com slash Cutler and use code Cutler for 20% off your order. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com slash Cutler and use code Cutler for 20% off any item. Whenever uh, whenever I played in Denver, um, we knew the Coors rep. And he would bring over, I had a condo downtown too, and he would bring over um, the little Coors, like eight ounce cans. Oh, yeah. And just like line the refrigerator. I mean, I drank, we drank a lot of Coors then. Yeah, I mean, it's great. I never was a Coors Light fan, yeah. but I like it. In the same way, I wasn't really a Budweiser fan. But, you know, but my but, problem was I liked bourbon. Oh, I wow. mean, bourbon is what I, you know, so you're I. Gonna, you're going to have to look at our bourbon collection. I saw really. a bit in there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did a I did a tour of a I don't know what you call it a bourbon factory, uh-huh. but I mean I, I had been sober for quite a while, but just the smell in there, I'm like this is this is nice. Do you think you'll ever? I, I mean, what, well, I mean, what, how did how, why did you? I mean, I, obviously I know why you stopped, but like, was there like a moment where like hey, like this this happened, I'm done here. I just felt so bad. I had gained a lot of weight. Okay. And my, I just, I, I had to go upstairs to get to my apartment and mm-hmm. I would just walk the stairs and be winded. Mm-hmm. I was smoking a lot of cigarettes. Mm-hmm. And I, I woke up just so hungover after a big weekend of drinking. I mean, the weekend was good. I went to New York City and then I drove home and partied with my friends. I went on a, the last night I drank, I went on a successful date. I mean, it, everything was fine, but I just yeah. felt so bad. Yeah. And I tried to smoke a cigarette the next day and I didn't have the lung capacity <laughs> to hit the cigarette. <laughs> so I was like, okay, let's give this up. Yeah. And then just, I don't know, a week or two went by and I just started to feel better and better. And I was just like, maybe I just don't do that again. Yeah. And I haven't smoked, I, I smoke a lot of cigars now. I like them, but yeah, I don't we, inhale. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we smoke a lot of cigars here too, but okay. we don't inhale either. Yeah, I lo- and I feel like I really missed out. I'd love to do, you know, the uh, scotch and cigar, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. It, it's not worth it to. So, I mean, you think there's probably never capacity in your life for you, like maybe like just get back into casually, responsibly drinking? Well, the thing is, it's too hard, it's too, uh, there's no way to find out yeah. other than to just do it. Sure. It's I went just... to a church one time and, you know, I didn't grow up Catholic. So all the churches I went to when they would do communion, it would be grape juice yeah. or something. But I went to a church one time and the communion wine was actually wine. It was a real deal. And it was a pretty nice little shot. Uh-huh. And I felt it going down. And I, I mean, I felt like you I was felt, like, you felt alive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <I'm back. laughs> I was like, am I going to relapse at church? <laughs> <laughs> Can never go to that church again. I know. I mean, I thought, I thought for a sec, because I used to love to drink on Sundays. Just I would go to church a lot of times and then leave and yeah. go drink mm-hmm. for the rest of the day. Mm-hmm. And and it's a, 
I love day drinking. That's what Charleston is so great for. Oh, love it. Love, love Charleston. I can see Denver being a fun day drinking place. That Denver's too. a fun drink. Nashville's a fun day drinking yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I never drank in Nashville, but yeah, I'd get in some real trouble downtown. Oh, gosh, yes. You would have, you'd have a blast. Does your wife drink? She drinks a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, she can handle it, and she's fun yeah. when she drinks. Sure. I encourage it, honestly. Yeah. I actually, she, when she, she used to smoke cigarettes, and she, mm -hmm. would, um, she would be so chill when she smoked. Mm -hmm. I encouraged it. Mm -hmm. She's like, you're the only, this is when we were dating, she's like, you're the only boyfriend I ever had that encouraged me to smoke. I'm like, yeah, because you're chill. Yeah, works, works, <laughs> works for both of us here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, so no alcohol. I guess you, is your only vice now just cigars? Well, I get into the weed a little bit, okay. uh, but you know, I, I I talk about this a little bit now in my stand up. But I, I say, you know, weed's too strong now. It's like, I, it's like I feel like I've done weaker acid than the weed that's out there now. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like, you know, I used to have a lot of fun. I could smoke a joint with people. We'd get yeah. this dirt weed, uh, uh -huh. and 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 you laugh and you have a good time. Now I take one hit, I'm out walking around in the yard praying. <laughs> you know, I feel like I'm having a heart attack. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, all that stuff is like, it's like 18, 19% THC and like, and it, it, it's all in labs. So, I mean, it's literally like exactly to the science potent oh, yeah. stuff. Have you tried the gummies? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I get it. I, I do edibles a little bit. Uh -huh. I like it. I, you know, I did edibles at a, a friend's house uh, last, I guess last year this time. And we're just sitting around and I forgot that I took it, mm -hmm. you know, we're just talking and all of a sudden I'm like, am I high right now? Why am I high? <laughs> and it, edibles are, are wild to me though. Cause sometimes yeah. they're really great, but other times they hit me in such a way that, yeah. and I'm like, there's no way to, you can't undo it. No, you can't. Like if you're smoking, like you can kind of, you can pace yourself a little bit with yeah. edibles. It's like, all right, you just took this edible and now it's like, I'm not sure what's going to happen here. We're going to roll the dice. Yeah, I took some liquid THC and I was I went on a road trip. Now, mm -hmm. my wife doesn't my wife doesn't mind that I do it. And this was before the baby, but we were um, we went on a road trip, just a day trip, to visit some family. And she was like, "Did you bring weed?" And I said, "No." I don't know why I lied about it, but I <laughs> said no because it was liquid. Yeah. So I was like, you know, I'll just do a little bit of this throughout the day, yeah. enjoy the family time, laugh, have a good time. And I was doing little drops all day, going out to the car like a real addict. You know, I'd be going out to the car taking drops. <laughs> but when we left, I don't know why I did this, but I took a full tincture of it. I oh. thought my, I thought, well, my tolerance is built up over the day. I'll do a big thing and then we'll drive home, listen to music. It'll be great. This is going to be great. And I'm driving from Chattanooga through the mountains and it starts hitting me. Having and, a good time here. Yeah. And it's hitting <laughs> me in waves. Oh gosh. And, and, and now I'm freaking out. And your out. wife doesn't know. I'm, right. My wife without. doesn't even know I brought it. Yeah. So I'm freaking out. I'm driving. And I can't tell my wife that I'm freaking out mm -hmm. because she'll know I brought it. Oh, yeah. And then I'll have to drive, freak out, and fight with my wife Gosh. about lying about weed. Gosh. So I just, I just decided, you know what? Uh, when, we, when we get home, I'm going to confess. Okay. But if we don't make it, yeah. no need to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> if we die here, she doesn't need to know this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, let's just die in peace. Uh -huh. The powerhouse nutrient creatine is clinically proven to not just power muscles, but also to power our immune system and our T-cells. T-cells are key to maintaining good health and are the first responders of your immune system. Concrete patented creatine HCL is the number one bioavailable creatine with 70% greater plasma uptake than standard creatine. The body absorbs it better and uses it more efficiently. Concrete is also the only microdosing creatine requiring only one small scoop per 100 pounds of body weight. Concrete provides all the strength and endurance benefits of creatine without any of the negative side effects of other creatines, like water retention or bloat or cramps or diarrhea. So optimize your health and fitness, both body and mind. Build a better you with Concrete. If you register now at concrete.com slash podcast, you can win a free membership to Planet Fitness for an entire year, plus a $500 Walmart Visa gift card. That's con-cret.com forward slash podcast to be one of the multiple winners. And Concrete is now available online and in-store at Walmart. Concrete is truly changing fitness and health. Have you, uh, I did a podcast with uh, a, a guy up in Chicago, he used to play for the Blackhawks, and they're getting into the, uh, the med medicinal mushrooms. Have you experienced this yet or no? Not it's kind medicinal. Of, it's kind of just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just the mushrooms in general. I mean, I did mushrooms and a little bit of stuff like that back in the day. Yeah. 
And I had a great time for a while, and then I kind of had a bad trip. Yeah. And then I felt like you can't, I, I, I don't know, if there's a fear that that comes back that it's hard to overcome. Yeah. They're kind of, I mean, they're doing them in chocolates now. It's kind of getting into the edible gummy world is what it's, okay. it, what, kind of what he's, what he's doing. But it, they're talking about it. It's opened up like brain waves, neurons, like all that, all that stuff that I don't know about. I mean, I, you know, it's like it all seems fun. It seems great. And all of it is fun. I always yeah. have the idea of weed that I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm hanging. I'm like, you know yeah. what? I want to, let's relax a little bit. Let's yeah. take, and then like, I, and then weed gives me anxiety. I'm really? like, I, I never, I never have anxiety. Yeah, I'm not, don't, you don't seem like an anxious human. Like getting high. I mean, I always say everything, everything's weird when I'm high. I went to a coffee shop with my wife and I was <laughs> like, we came out and I go, that was weird in there, huh? She was like, <laughs> now nah, that was like the most normal it's a coffee, shop, <laughs> coffee shop experience we could have had. Yeah. We ordered coffee, they gave it to us, we drank it. <laughs> yeah, now we're outside. What was weird? I was like, I don't know, but there was a vibe in there. <laughs> do, you get, do, you, <laughs> do you get nervous before shows? Uh, not really. It depends on the show. If sure. it's uh, something to a level that I've never done before, mm -hmm. like Netflix doing that made me nervous. Yeah. Um, anytime I do late night, there's a bit of nerves. The first time I did The Tonight Show, uh, m maximum nerves, I think. Oh, really? I'm pretty sure the booker thought, oh, this was a mistake. This is going to go bad. But then I, I, I was able to really turn those nerves into adrenaline okay. and really focus I think nerves help me as long as I get laugh a laugh early. Early, yeah. Get some momentum here. Yeah, because it's like I don't know. To me, nerves uh, means that you care about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, you, I agree. Totally. You know, if yeah. you're never nervous, then maybe you don't even care you about what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, you don't give two shits if it goes good or bad. And I never with comedy. I never uh, phone it in. Mm -hmm. I've said. Oh, I'm about to just kind of phone this in. I'm tired. And I get up on stage and it just, it matters to me. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. I don't want anybody to leave that show going, oh, that guy sucks. Yeah. So I, I'm like, I try every time. Yeah, it's important to you. That's great. It, it, do you have like a go-to joke if, if things are going, going south on you? Well, I did, early? I did have a couple. And now um, that I've done Netflix, yeah. I feel like, I don't know if it's true, but I feel like everybody at my show has watched Netflix. Yeah, I'm sure I'm, they probably have. Yeah, I feel or at like ninety percent have. I feel like they haven't all watched the late night, so I could get away with some of those. But it's like that thirty minutes is gone for me now. Yeah, and that makes me sad because a lot of the I one of my go tos was my ice cream joke where I where I would say. Uh, I never got ice cream as a kid. My mom used to just pour milk into a bowl and then call us into the room and go, well, you're too late. <laughs> that was a real go-to for me. Uh -huh. And then my hotel joke where I would say, uh, I sit at a lot of bad hotels and uh, I sit at a hotel, had a sign inside the room that said not responsible for stolen items. Uh -huh. So I took some stuff. Took the lamp. That was a real go-to for me. Yeah. But now they're gone. I, I really I like the uh, the dusty hat with the kidnappers like that's that, oh, yeah. that one I'm trying to oh, get thank mapped you. out yeah. there that's a good one so I mean I mean do you feel pressure now that you have to you have to create a bunch of new stuff going forward well yeah I mean absolutely it's like my but what I did was uh, since this was my first like like uh, introduction to the world I mean yeah. you could say late night was but Netflix is is the king oh it's now. huge yeah so it's like I use stuff that I had worked on for years for Netflix. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, that way if you come see me live, it is a full new hour. Sure. But there were a couple of jokes on there that are fairly new to mm -hmm. me that I'm like, I wanna keep doing those. Yeah. And I was doing them this weekend a little bit and it felt like they weren't working and really? I'm like, okay, they've already seen so you've this. They've already heard this. And I hate it, cause I got a new hotel joke about, I, about wall outlets. Mm -hmm. I say you check into an old hotel and you're plugging your phone charger and this falls out and I go, mm -hmm. Who's stretching out all the plugs? Right? <laughs> That's one of my favorite new jokes, and now I can't do it. Can't do it. It's too bad. What's your What's your process on coming up with new stuff? Is, is it coming easy to you, or is it? I I think it does come pretty easy, yeah. but it, it it you know some of it's better than others. Like yeah. a lot of ideas come to me. I feel like I just when I'm when I'm on stage in a club, I do a full hour. It's a long and time. I, yeah, and I got my I got my base jokes. I'm like, I'm gonna do these jokes. Sure. And then in between them, I'll try to work in something some, new. Some new stuff. And I try to riff and just I feel like I'm funnier when I say it out loud than when I write it down. Gotcha. Because everything I write, if yeah. I write it on paper, I think 
this is gold. Yes. And <laughs> this then is going to kill it. Yeah. I was like, this is the greatest bit I've ever wrote. <laughs> and then I go out and it bombs. Uh -huh. And then I can't, it's almost like I've written it into my brain. Now yeah. I, I can't adjust the wording. Okay. So yeah, however, you can't, you can't, you can't work on it and mix it up. So maybe it works. It's just like, yeah. it's in stone that, that, that way. Yeah. And I got gotcha. a pretty good memory so I can go up and say something and then have a pretty good idea. All right. That worked, that worked. Right. Let's, let's adjust this. Will you write out like your kind of entire gig for the most part and just kind of memorize it or you just have, like, how do you do that? I mean, I used to memorize it. To, yeah. to the word. Sure. Um, and I, I feel like I still do that, but I don't, not intentionally. Yeah. I just remember how it works best. Mm -hmm. But I have a set list. I'll just write, you know, I'll write on a sheet of paper, like, there's the bullet points. Yeah. These are the jokes we're going to do. Yeah. And then, um, and that's how, I, that's how I get the set down. Now, you know, with Netflix, it's like, when you're going to do a 30 minutes, at least for me, I just, I do that 30 minutes every show yeah. until I do Netflix. Okay, so you practiced the hell out of it. Yeah, because I wanted it. all of the, I want it to be a, just a flow where yep. you don't feel like I've gone into the next joke. It's yeah. just, and I want connections and yep. transitions. Yep. I had a guy c criticize my transitions on Twitter. It made me so mad because I'm like, they were good. Yeah. I don't even want to argue with this guy. He, and he he's probably works at like some, like he's probably a computer engineer or something like that. Yeah. He doesn't even know how to tell a joke. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but he's... Your transitions need some work. Yeah. And then, you know, people will come on. I had a, somebody come on Twitter and say, I stole my blackout joke from John Mulaney. So then I'm, you know, I could get a million compliments, but mm -hmm. one insult, I'm like, oh, I got to, I got to dig gotta into this. It. So I go watch all John Mulaney's jokes about drinking. Uh -huh. And I'm like, okay, he does talk about blacking out, but they're nothing alike. Yeah. It's like, I'm sure John Mulaney blacked out a lot. I'm sure a lot of comedians but, probably talk about blacking yeah, out. But I blacked out a lot too. Yeah. You know, I mean. <laughs> It's like John Mulaney doesn't own all the blackout, blackout jokes. jokes. Uncut with Jay Cutler is brought to you by Progressive. What's one thing you'd purchase with a little extra savings? A weighted blanket? Smart speaker? That new self-care trend you keep hearing about? Well, Progressive wants to make sure you're getting what you want by helping you save money on car insurance. Drivers who save by switching to Progressive save over $700 on average, and customers can qualify for an average of six discounts when they sign up. Discounts like having multiple vehicles on your policy. Progressive offers outstanding coverage and award-winning claim service. Day or night, they have customer support 24-7, 365 days a year. When you need them most, they're at their best. A little off your rate each month goes a long way. Get a quote today at Progressive.com and see why four out of five new auto customers recommend Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National annual average insurance savings by new customers surveyed by who saved with Progressive between June 2020 and May 2021. Potential savings will vary, discounts vary, and are not available in all states and situations. Do you have anybody that you kind of test jokes out on? Not really. I used to have some friends that I would uh, really talk to about jokes, and we were all on the same level with comedy. We were mm -hmm. all coming up, but now m most of those guys have either quit doing it or yeah. they barely do it anymore. So yeah. it's like they're not as, they're still funny people, but they're not as yeah. uh, practiced. Sure, sure. Did you have, I mean, were there, were there comedians that you looked up to as you were kind of getting into the game? Well, I had some albums I really liked. I like Mitch Hedberg, uh, Strategic Grill Locations. Uh -huh. It's the one with the bass in the background. Uh -huh. I remember I had, it was, I had a girl come over to my apartment. I don't know if we were on a date or what was going to happen. <laughs> but I put on... What do you mid, mean you don't know if you were on a date? Well, I didn't, I don't, I don't, I think about that day sometimes. Yeah, and I, think, I need to hear, I want to hear about this day. Well, I just think, was that supposed to be something else? Yeah, well, because, how, did it, how did it start? Well, I invited her over. And she came over and, you know, we were just kind of hanging out. And I was like, well, let's, this was, you know, in the days, I don't even know if streaming was a thing back then. Okay. So we put on a Mitch Hedberg album mm -hmm. and it was so good that we just laughed the entire time. And what, then, had you ever hung out with her before? Well, we worked together. So I had hung out with her a little bit, but we oh. never, you know, we never made out or anything like that. But this could have been yeah. the day. It definitely, I mean, especially it sounds like you played it right. You just laughed, you had fun, but there is that there is some some gray area there, especially with a work work uh, associate. Yeah, I mean, I just well, we were you know it was a restaurant, so it wasn't like yeah, it wasn't like you're in an office building. Yeah, you could do whatever. You could do whatever. Yeah. There were no rules here, right? But I, you know, so we listened to this full album and I laugh, and then 
we go to my neighbor's house, which is probably where the mistake came in yeah. uh, for the day. But we, I took that album to my neighbors. We mm -hmm. put it in and laughed for another hour. It just blew me away. I had never heard anything like that. Yeah. And then there's an album by Steve Martin called Let's Get Small. Mm -hmm. uh, just all my friends think it's a stupid album. Mm -hmm. It's so great. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so <laughs> silly, but it's so great. And then, you know, Jeff Foxworthy obviously was a big, Yeah, you know, you're going, uh, you're opening in Atlanta, what? This weekend. This weekend. Yeah. That'll be awesome. I've worked with him a little bit. I yeah. opened for him recording his Netflix special. Um, but it, yeah, it blows my mind. I mean, I, I was in middle school when You Might Be a Redneck came out. Yeah. I was living were, in a trailer yeah. park. Yeah. And I was like, this guy is speaking to us. Yeah. I had never heard anybody uh, speak, speak to, to us like that. How'd you get hooked up with him? Just agents and just yeah. Thing. I mean, I did his podcast um, a couple of years ago, just via uh, I don't know um, the phone. Sure, you know, but um, but yeah. And then I've uh, I, you know I've worked with um, I did Larry the Cable Guy show a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Met Bill Engvall when I did Nashville Squares. Worked with Ron White a little bit, just happenstance on the road. Ron White makes me laugh too. Yeah, <laughs> he's funny. Well, I was listening to Ron. I think Ron White has the perfect delivery. Yeah. He really knows how to deliver a joke. Yeah, he does. And it's like, I, so I was watching Ron White and Mitch Hedberg at the same time, and uh -huh. I feel like my delivery, at least in the beginning, was a bit of a, that blend. Gotcha. I gotcha. mean, I just love telling a good joke. I mean, it's like street jokes. I mean, even those like, jokes that everybody tells. I mean, you hear some guy tell a joke and you're like, all right, well, that's pretty funny, but you don't know how to tell it. Yeah. And then somebody can tell that same joke and it be really great. It's such an, it's such an art form to it. You know, you're, yeah. not, you're not just out there just talking. Like there's an art, like you said, there's delivery to it that not many people can really nail. Yeah. It's like I had a guy telling me a joke one time and he was like, and then blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, blah, blah, blah. It's like, if you're not interested in telling me the joke, why should I be hearing it? You know what I mean? <laughs> a, lot of, uh, a lot of comedians get into like acting and, or writing for, for comedy, like shows and TV. Do you think you'll ever try to that? I don't know. I sold a show to ABC okay, so uh, in early in 2018 and uh, it didn't get made but I did sell one and then I sold a, a cartoon to Hulu an animated series I always call it a cartoon but uh, and it didn't get made but I was really excited about that yeah. I don't think I want to do acting yeah I a lot of people do get into comedy just for that but mm -hmm. I like telling jokes yeah I think it's one of the most fun things it's just like a you know I just go and I basically live a normal life yep. other than you know, my job is to tell jokes. And then I go to a club and get to stand on stage and make people laugh. Yeah. With acting, I mean, you're sitting in a room and they're, uh, yeah. they're like, I, I don't know, I, even with Netflix, that little shot of us at the very beginning yeah. in the bar, yeah, yeah. I mean, that took several oh, hours. I'm sure that was a, just a, a pain. <laughs> I was like, I mean, it's a, you know, it's really cool looking, but it's yeah. almost nothing to it. And yeah. it took several hours. Gosh. Every 60 seconds. Not one, but two children are trafficked. And every 30 seconds, one is forced into exploitation for the purpose of heinous acts. Human trafficking is happening in your own backyard. It is happening to your neighbors. Many whom we see every day in our own communities hidden in plain sight. You know, there's kids out there that are being bought and sold 20 times a day. We must bring the child back to the center of our care and concern. Today we launch Goya Cares. Goya Cares is committed to supporting victims and overcomers of trafficking and abuse to recover, restore, reconnect, and to shine the light that will block traffic. This is where we become the light. God saved me. I believe that I was called to this. Perhaps he's calling you to block traffic. Join Goya Cares and visit blocktraffic.org. Do you get recognized a lot more since the Netflix? Well, it's only been out a short time. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, I mean, I do get recognized quite a bit now. I mean, between TikTok yeah. and uh, my well, you, TikTok does really well. You've got a pretty distinct look, so. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like if I pull the hair up, take the hat off, I won't get recognized. But yeah. I like wearing the hat. Yeah, That's definitely. why I'm like, this is how I looked off stage before. Mm -hmm. why, not, why change now? Yeah. Get it. Get it. I mean, it, 
at least my comedy is friendly. And so yeah. most of the time in the airport, like I was in Charlotte and they have those, escal uh, not escalators, but moving sidewalks. Uh -huh. that go, and a guy goes, we're having a good time <laughs> as we pass. So I was like, all right. That's great. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that tagline's going to go pretty far for you. I mean, that's yeah. going to be kind of the thing, so. I hope so. I mean, it's a, yeah, I mean, it's just a positive. I mean, yeah. obviously I didn't invent having a good time, yeah. but the we're having a good time yes. makes it a bit different. When did you start doing it? I. And how did you come up with it? Well, it's like, you know, me and my wife would say that a little bit to each other, you mm -hmm. know, like when we first started dating, we'd laugh, we'd go, ah, oh, we're having fun or mm -hmm. we're having a good time. Mm -hmm. And it just, I just started doing it on stage. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know, it just felt so fun to, just because it's like, the first couple of times it's fun, but mm -hmm. as it builds throughout yeah. the set, yeah. any awkward moment oh, in the show. It's perfect. I could just say, oh, we're having a good time. Perfect. Especially when a joke bombs, I give them a little wave. Uh -huh. it, you know, and I, and, and, and it's like, you can do it lower, higher, yep. faster. Oftentimes I tell the audience, I say, when I trail off like that, that's when I've lost confidence. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Um, okay, you've got uh, Jeff Foxworthy coming up. Netflix is out again, season three, episode five. Watch it if you haven't, it's amazing. Um, Dusty Slay Instagram, yes, Twitter, Twitter, Dusty Slay, uh, webpage, dustyslay.com, dustyslay.com. You sell hats there, I do. There, if you go there, you know, I don't know, depending on when this airs, yep. they should be back in stock. Okay, if, if this were live for some reason, yep. I would say they're out of stock right yep. now, but they just came in. Well, I think we're airing next week, so okay. they should hopefully they're back in stock. I'm gonna get one. Um, I should have brought you one. That's, a, that's quite all right. You don't have them in stock, so we're going to wait. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I appreciate it. I had a good time. Yeah, thank I you. I hope you did have a good time. I had a great time. I appreciate it. Yeah, um, we lo look forward to seeing uh, more from you. Thank you. All right. All right. Appreciate it. Okay, that is a wrap on Dusty Slay. Um, like I said before, I always love doing comedians. Um, they're a lot of fun. They got good stories, good jokes. He's funny, super funny. Check it out on Netflix, um, as I said earlier. It's uh, kind of new out there right now. Um, he's hilarious. He's going to be in Atlanta soon. He's actually, he's actually booked up for the rest of the year. So uh, DustySlay.com, at DustySlay on Instagram and Twitter. Um, give him a follow. Um, help him get going a little bit more. He's kind of he's breaking through. Uh, so he, he's going to be uh, a fun one to watch in the next couple of years. Uh, hit me up, Instagram, Twitter, as usual. Um, we've got... I think we've got an alien expert coming up um, next, which I'm super excited about. He's British, I think. I think he was the head of the British government, UFO something. He has an important title. But um, I think that's coming up next, which uh, I hope you get some answers. But again, um, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Um, let me know how we're doing. And uh, I'll see you next week. Thanks. Thanks.